Hey there, Lynn B. Oxford Wealth with another session of OWA Live. Today we're going to talk about estate planning, some basics about estate planning. I've already drawn a few ideas here on the board and I, I want to review those with each of you. Estate planning is important to uh, consider and put together properly. Certainly uh, your financial advisor can be a great resource in providing financial guidance in the estate planning arena. Uh, you want to make sure that you're working with folks that have legal expertise and as appropriate uh, tax expertise. So your advisor uh, uh, can help you in some of those basic ideas, but then if you're given legal or tax advice, trust but verify as we always say, and make sure that those ideas are reviewed by competent professionals in those areas. So anyway, here we go. Within the estate planning arena, we have wills or we have trusts or we have nothing, and I'm not gonna show you nothing because you can figure that out yourself. Nothing means we haven't done any planning and we die what's called intestate. That sounds kind of weird. What that means is there's no documents, there's no instructions, and please don't do that. That's, that's a mess because then we have all kinds of challenges. Now, a will provides instructions to the probate court judge how you want your assets to be uh, designated to who and uh, that type of thing. A lot of folks think, well, if I have a will, then I avoid probate. No, no, a will is simply instructions to probate, which is a good thing to have because without that, the probate occurs in test state and then there's all kinds of people come out of the woodwork and they have claims on your assets and you have lots of delays and problems and don't do that. So take the time, do it yourself. Uh, you can go online, rocketlawyer.com, legalzoom.com, uh, various resources to do it by yourself. We encourage using professionals, but at a minimum, please get the self-help going on a will to designate how you want stuff to go to who. In addition to the will, you can have a POD, pay on death on your bank accounts. Any asset that you have, you can name beneficiaries on, no probate. Okay, so anything we name beneficiary on, no probate. That's a good thing. Transfer on death, TOD, okay, or even your property can be named as a TOD in various states. So that's a will, uh, takes time, it's not always real clean, uh, but it's better than nothing. Now let's go to the next step of a trust. A revocable living trust is the common term. Uh, this avoids all this stuff over here. You create a box, as I call it. When you set up a trust, you have all your assets in this box, and while you're living, you have the box, and you can take stuff out and put stuff in. You control it. When I graduate, as I call it, a tip over, pass on, whatever the term is, well, the box is still here with all the assets, and it gets passed privately and immediately to the successor, the trustee, successor trustee. So that's a good, clean way of getting your assets in order as well and, and doing a trust. Does everybody need a trust? No. If you want to control money from the grave, a trust may be an effective tool. There are other ways. Anyways, the basics, wills versus trusts, great tools, just use them properly like anything, understand how they work, what they do, and then employ that. Talk to your family about it. Make sure that they're aware of what's going on and, and, and uh, how they can help administer that in your absence or if you become ill. We have powers of attorneys that need to be employed for financial or uh, other types of decisions, end of life decisions. So power of attorney needs to be looked at as well. All right, well that's it for now. Any questions, feel free to call our office. We're, we're happy to share more information uh, and always uh, stay tuned to our uh, upcoming sessions of OWA Live. Until then, see you later.